Alright guys, welcome to the last video on fonts, or really specifically devoted to fonts. Um, we'll talk about fonts throughout the layouts. There's some things in this chapter that we're not going to cover right now. Um, just in case you guys are wondering, I'm back in chapter 10, page 201. Uh, I'm going to continue where we left off um, on his um, pattern here, which we've talked about font families and font sizes and uh, colors. Um, but we haven't covered um, the other ones here, and I'm going to add a couple of my own um, line height, which is important, and letter spacing. Okay, So I'm just going to dive right in because this stuff is pretty straightforward. I'm going to be leaving the code from the last video here. and uh, So I'm going to add the first one he has here on his list, um, which is font style. Okay, And font style is used to make things italic, so it's font dash style, lowercase, colon. Um, the default is normal. Um, you don't need to add font style if you're not going to make anything italic, so this is uh, only if you're going to make things italic. So you can save this and see see what it did to our text here. I'm going to reload this page, and you'll see that our paragraph here is now italic. Okay. And the next one he has is font-weight, again lowercase, colon. And really, there's only one uh, value that you can, should use here, which is bold. Um, there's some other ones. There's bolder, and um, there's a value system of 100 to 900 in increments of 100, so you can use 2, 3, 4, and so on. Um, but really, those aren't recommended to be used anymore. So we'll stick with bold or normal, but normal is a default, so we're going to go to bold. Okay, so I'm going to save this and see what it does. And voila, it has reloaded, and they are bold. All right, we're just going to keep moving down the list. Hopefully these are pretty straightforward to understand. Uh, next one is font-variant, V-A-R-I-A-N-T. Uh, okay. And on this one, I just want to point out, um, he kind of gives you what each value um, you can use for each of these properties in the book, or just a quick list of what they are. But um, I don't know if this is an error or if you meant to do this, but it's not small caps. It's actually small dash caps. If you do small caps, it will not work, so don't forget the dash here. So go back to our list here and make this small dash caps. Okay, And we'll save this, and let's see what it did. And now all of my, uh, font, all of my text here are, uh, are capital letters, but they're small capital letters, because if you see the letter L there, um, that's actually a capital letter, and it's still bigger than the rest, so that's what small caps does. Okay. So first letter's bigger than the rest, everything else is still capitalized. All right. The next one, and this one I believe is an error in the book, because um, there's no way that this is correct. Um, font-transform is not actually font-transform. So I'm going to type this out real quick. So I'm going to say font-transform, uh, colon, and then um, we'll use uh, the first one there, capitalize. I don't know if that was the first one or not. But you'll notice that uh, over here on the left, um, this font dash transform is not purple like the other ones, which is kind of nice that um, Notepad++ does it, makes the properties purple. That's because font dash transform is not a valid property. Okay, so that's wrong in your textbook. It's actually text dash transform. All right. Um, and that looks wrong. I think I misspelled something here. Um, so use text tr dash transform. Um, this isn't going to work because I misspelled capitalize. Um, I also want to make sure that font variant doesn't get in the way so we at least see a difference. They don't, uh, it doesn't matter if you use them combined, I just want to make sure that we can see the capitalized um, apart from the uh, small caps. So let me change this to the proper spelling here and reload the page. Alright, so now every individual word is capitalized. Okay, that's what capitalized is. Every word in um, the P tag now is capitalized. And I could have left the rest of it as small caps. I just wanted to make sure we could see the difference between small caps and capitalized. That's why I got rid of it. All right. Um, and then you also have the other two, and we'll just we'll try one more here. We'll try um, lowercase. Okay, so now everything is lowercase, and to prove it, the L, if you remember, is actually capitalized. 
um, in my code, but it has been overridden by the CSS telling everything to be lowercase, no matter what I've written. Okay, so there's the proof right there. So everything now is lowercase. Okay. Um, now, if we look at our... Um, now that we've covered these guys, so we've covered all these, I want to add two more properties here. If we look at our fonts and our text, and um, we really think about it, there's only like, as we've talked about, a certain amount of fonts we can use, and there's only a certain amount of properties that we've learned so far to make the look and feel we want, right? So you, you kind of feel like you're, um, you know, kind of limited here, especially if you come from the graphic design world where you can do whatever you want uh, for the most part. Um, but, you know, there are a couple of more things here we can add to our list of properties that can really spice things up a bit and make things look different using the exact same font. Okay, so I'm going to add uh, a couple more properties here. First one is line-height. And the two I want to teach you are line height and letter spacing, and that's kind of the equivalent to uh, letting and kerning for those of you that come from graphic design, although it's not exactly the same. All right, so back to this. Um, for line height, the values you can use are um, pixels or one of the relative units of measurement, like M. Um, you can use pixels, and I'm going to use pixels here just to demonstrate. Um, but it is definitely not what you want to use um, for the most part, and I'll show you why. Because if you use pixels, and I'm going to make this a small number here, 8 pixels for line height. And uh, reload my page here. All of a sudden, because the font is way bigger than 8 pixels, um, they're overlapping, right? So um, we can't really use 8 pixels here because if people resize their fonts, even if you were to say 8 pixels for my line height, because you use 8 pixels for your font size, um, if someone resizes their text, all of a sudden it's going to be bad. So I'd have to double this just to make this look decent. But if someone made their font even bigger, then the same thing would happen. And uh, just so you know, I believe, and um, you graphic design people can correct me if I'm wrong, it's measuring from the bottom of one line to the bottom of the next line. So basically from the bottom of that lorem to the bottom of that NUNC is 16 pixels. Um, and that's how the line height is measured. Okay, But we don't want to use pixels. We want to stay away from pixels for this. We want to keep it this at a, at a relative unit of measurement. So I'm going to go back to this. And uh, since I have my font size set to 1.25 M's, let's just do the same here and see what happens. All right, so 1.25 M's. And I'm just going to add it here. And, uh, whoops, duplicated. All right, so save this. Let's go see what happened. So there you go. Ah, a little more legibility. A little more space there, room to breathe. All right, now using this exact same font and font size, you can actually change this measurement. And we'll make it like 1.5 M. And even that looks a little different than before, right? So you can really see how you get a little more control here over your actual content um, and make things look a little cooler, right? Um, depending on your website, you might want more space. Uh, you can make that number as big as you want, but at some point, obviously, that gets really weird. So um, I'd encourage you to play with those and see what you get. And the other one, which is similar to line height, except we're going to go in the horizontal direction now, is text transform. I'm sorry, not text transform. Um, letter dash spacing. Sorry, I was thinking the other error in the book there. So letter spacing. And again, like line height, we're going to want to make this a relative unit of measurement, so we're not going to stick with pixels on this one. We're going to go with M's again. All right. And the thing about letter spacing is that it already has a built-in um, spacing between each letter, I believe, of 1M. And in case I'm wrong, I'll correct myself in a later video, but um, let's just go with that. So let's say there's a default letter spacing of 1M. We have to add to that 1M. Okay, so this can be a really small number. It doesn't have to be 1.5 M's because you're going to add to what's already there. So really it would be 2.5 M's. So I'm going to start with a small number here. I'm going to say 0.3 M's to start with. Okay, just so we can see a change here. So this can be a smaller number. All right, let's go see what happened to the space between each letter. And there you go. There's a bigger space between each of these letters. Um, 
and you can play with you know the sizing and see what kind of cool things you can come up with with different fonts and different font styles okay the other valid thing you can do with these relative units of measurement is you can make them negative so I can say negative 0.3m okay let's see what happens again don't be afraid to try things guys so negative 0.3m seems to overlap my letters here so that's way too much okay so I'm going to change this to 0.1 and see what we get and that's you know slightly more legible you can go with that if you're happy with that um, the cool thing about this is it goes at three decimal points uh, or three zeros past the decimal point so um, let's say um, we'll make this point oh five M's and then go see what happens and I'll stick with that that looks pretty good all right so um, you definitely have a lot of options okay if you start mixing and matching letter spacing and line heights and different fonts and different font styles and different font weights and so on and so forth you can really get the look you want um, even though we only have about you know 10 or 12 fonts that are you know okay for the web all right so play around with that and see what you get um, I'm gonna go into the book here real quick um, and talk about what the rest of this chapter looks like um, I'm not gonna assign you reading in this chapter that we're in right now um, except for this page 201 you guys should know what that says but the rest of these things um, we will cover as we go through our layouts so for example here he talks about um, highlighting certain text and you can try this at home and see what it does so you guys get a jump start um, you have some more options for decorating text with underlines and stuff we'll cover that when we talk about navigation okay hopefully that makes sense when you you know when you hover over something sometimes it gets underlined so we'll talk about that then text shadow we probably won't cover in this class um, only because it's a little obscure not a lot of people use it um, text replacement we'll talk about for sure so feel free to read chapter 10 I'm not gonna quiz you on chapter 10 I might just quiz you on what's on that first page 201 because it's in the video um, but you don't have to read through this we'll cover all these things um, as we move along here with the rest of the uh, semester so 201 for sure um, we've learned these guys here now so all these should be we should be good to go with um, we've learned line height and we've learned letter spacing so I'll quiz you guys on that stuff more than likely um, let's see what else he has here he has a tip that you can read um, this is actually applies more to the previous video so all right we should be good to go um, that's it for fonts alright guys I'll see you guys uh, next week and don't forget to do the quiz